Kimberly, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So you and I were acquainted because you are a patient of Dr. Sechkin and Dr. Goldstein, right? Correct. And he said, um, with your permission, that you've gone through a heck of a lot with endometriosis. It has been a, a huge journey, ranging from even just trying to get a diagnosis into now care with surgeries and hormones and everything. It, it has been, it's been an epic journey. Yeah. And, and I know for so many of us, it feels like the journey to diagnosis in itself is a struggle because it takes an average of 10 years for people to even get a diagnosis. And then on top of it, you finally get the diagnosis, then it's what's the best treatment option for me individually. And then it either works, it doesn't work, you have to tailor it. It's just a never ending, for so many of us, I should say. Some people have you know, treatment and they're great and God bless that situation, but for so many of us, myself included, it is a, it's an ongoing kind of struggle and you have to adapt. For you, were you someone that struggled for a really long time um, with pain or other kinds of symptoms before you actually were diagnosed with endo? I did. It took me 13 excruciating years to get a, a proper diagnosis. One of the biggest challenges that came with my diagnosis is that most people experience extreme um, periods where they have a lot of pain, nausea, that's just to name two symptoms. Mm -hmm. For me, it was the opposite. So I had very light periods, maybe one to two days, no cramping. So at that point in my life, I thought, okay, I'm lucky I'm not one of these people. And then in my 20s, I started to get very, very sick. Uh, so I was misdiagnosed with fibromyalgia, with TMJ, oh, wow. and then uh, it went into chronic UTIs. The, the biggest challenge with that is that when I was so sick, it was, it was chronic pain. And I never experienced pain like this in the sensations that I was feeling. So I was constantly going to neurologists. I went to a urologist. I went to my primary care complaining about this pain and, and the low back pain that I was experiencing was so severe. There were days that I couldn't stand or, or sit and not, nothing was comfortable. And, and at this time I was going through school. So it was, it was doubly frustrating. Um, come to find out what had happened is the endometriosis had actually wrapped around my ureter and the ureter, the ureter is the connection from the kidney to the bladder. And so all of these times where doctors were thinking my pain was UTIs, it was actually the strain on my kidney. Same. Had that too. Yeah. yeah. And then the endometriosis had set up resonance inside my bladder at the same time. So when, when you're going back and forth and trying to, to tell them this, this pain is legitimate and that I need care and help, uh, to be dismissed with something as simple as a UTI when you're experiencing blood in the urine, this type of pain, it's, it's very frustrating. So after 13 years, it, it took doing a biopsy of the endometriosis in the bladder to get an accurate diagnosis. And by that time, my kidney function for the left kidney was at 6% and two thirds of my bladder had been eroded by endometriosis. <sighs> It, it was it was horrific, oh. and, and to to live that with without adequate pain care, that that really needs to be a flag for everyone that you know your body, and when you're experiencing that pain, you have to push and, and really be an advocate. Because you know, and it's, and I know when we talk about advocacy, and I get so. I had one of uh, one of our friends on. Her name is Lauren, and and she and I were talking about this concept of advocacy and self advocating. And sometimes you're just so damn tired, but and know. you know, and it's like, go find that loved one, that that other champion, whether it's a partner, a best friend, a trusted colleague, someone who's going to go to that doctor's office and just be like, my friend, my loved one is burnt. You have to listen because I think there's a point where you just get like. You either have to have that fire in your belly and it keeps going because you just want to get well, or you're just like, I maybe I'm crazy, maybe it's not there. And and there are stories like yours, you lose kidney function, you could have renal failure, lung collapse. Like the idea that this is a benign illness, I feel like really needs to be redefined because what happened to you was far from benign. 
Absolutely. And, and I can't stress your point enough about advocacy and finding those people who will rally around you that believe in your pain, believe that endometriosis and what you're fighting for is real and will go so far as to be a support system for you to go to appointments, to, to help you communicate with your coworkers, your boss, your family, those people that are, you know, around you all, all the time that need to know about what you're going through and, and to help you in ways that they can. Uh, I, I was lucky I had that with my family and I had that with my, my friends, uh, my coworkers as well. So, so I was lucky in that point, but it's true. Without that, you do start to question what you're feeling and you second guess yourself. Yeah. I had a gynecologist actually write in one of my medical files that I was in denial about my drug abuse <gasps> and that, and I have that with me. And that, that was three months before they found the endometriosis in my bladder. And that just, it resonated with me so much that at that point I was very angry and frustrated because it, it wasn't it wasn't about that. It was about needing help. It wasn't about what prescriptions could but, ease the pain. But I'm sorry, but how, how dare a medical practitioner, and I'm furious, and I'm not even living this with you, impugn your character, impugn your reputation, because they don't know what the heck they're doing. How dare they put that on your file? Because that file follows you to other doctors who are going to then mistrust what you're saying about your own body like that to me right there is the problem in a nutshell with what the person who was born with the uterus one in ten in the united states is dealing with and that is a fight in itself because you're fighting a system absolutely and, and not only are you fighting a system but you're fighting the miseducation and you're fighting the lack of education as well because there are so few programs that promote endometriosis and really talk about what it is as a as a condition for, for those who are experiencing it. And so you start to combine, com, um, combine all these levels that you're trying to fight through and, and it really, you, you can feel defeated. Yeah. And, and you're already exhausted trying to, to fight for yourself. It's, it's just the physical symptoms alone. I can't imagine going through, you know, I didn't have the severe kidney function loss that you did. Um, I just had more of a strangled um, ureter and, and all of that um, with those kinds of similar issues. But I remember how sick I was and to function every day, just to physically function was a feat in itself. So then to ask people to then fight for themselves, it's just like, it's a Herculean task in so many ways. So after that doctor wrote that in your report, what, when were you finally listened to? So luckily, I had great advice from my mom. She said, you have to fight until you find people who believe you. So <laughs> once you get someone who believes you, that's going to manifest that all you need is that one person. And for me, that, that was a urologist. She had helped my cousin with chronic kidney stones. And I went to her and I said, this is what my problem is. Here's what's going on. I don't know what to do anymore. And she said, well, let's, let's actually look inside your bladder. We can do a scope. I'll be able to see it. And I said, that's exactly what I, I need. I've been telling someone they have to look inside because it's, it's in there and I can feel these pieces moving. And then she, the minute she did the scope and looked in there, she said she saw what she thought was an eyeball. She'd never seen anything like it. And it was hanging inside my bladder. She said, I, to be honest with you, I, I don't know what it is. I've never seen anything like this. So for four weeks before we could go in and do surgery, we were under the, the kind of the hypothesis that I had bladder cancer because yeah. of what this looked like. So, so that in itself was terrifying, but she said, hang in there. We're going to go in there. We'll do a biopsy. This is your key, you know, stay strong. You're going to be able to find out what you have once and for all, once we do this. And sure enough, within 10 days of doing the surgery and having the biopsy on that piece of endometriosis, I was calling her and telling her, you know, I, I know you removed this, but I'm still in so much pain. She said, well, I, I have an answer for you. It's endometriosis. And it, it was such a bittersweet moment because she, she celebrated with me. She said, now you have an answer. Now you have a diagnosis. So on one hand, and, and so many endo warriors have expressed this is, okay, I'm not crazy. This pain is legitimate, but 
but then also now I have this huge diagnosis where at that point they were just starting to know about it and know how to treat it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was that one, one urologist who, who believed me. And that was the first domino in, in the whole chain. Thank God for the one person, your mom gave you stellar advice. Just oh, thank you. Yeah. To, I mean, really. And I think that advice that you're sharing with us will help someone else because it really, it really does only take one person to believe you in order to, like you said, get the ball rolling in order to get the proper treatment. So you, you had all of these traumatic experiences. And I do think they're on the level of, of emotional and physical trauma. And I don't use that word lightly, but it is a lot to go through. And you harness that into a foundation of your own, our yellow line. Can you tell us about that? Yes, our yellow line foundation was born with the idea that we needed to create a community that was a little different than what was already out there. Thank goodness for all the endo warriors out there who have Instagrams and Facebooks that are, are promoting what this condition is and, and what you need to do. Our yellow line looked at that and said, for the first part of it, we need to be inclusive. The LGBTQIA plus community, they need someone who's going to support them and understand that this is not a female disease. This mm -hmm. is an, an everyone disease. And no matter where you're at, our yellow line wants to support you. So when you come to our sites, we always call everyone an endo warrior. We don't want to use any gender specific pronouns because we want you to feel that it's a comfortable space where you can talk about everything that you're experiencing. Uh -huh. Thinking back to, to the journey of all the levels that you have to fight through, I know just fighting through the, the female level of getting doctors to care for you was struggle enough. Now add everything else that an LGBTQIA plus person experiences walking into an ER. So the more we can be a soft place to come, to vent, to, to learn, to talk about it, where you feel safe, mm -hmm. that's what we want to do. Yeah. No, and that's great you're doing it because I've had this discussion with some of my endo friends and we're all like, how do we navigate so that everyone feels included because it isn't just a female disease. It's anybody born with these parts because mm -hmm. you can have endo. You have a uterus, you have ovaries, you can have endo. It doesn't matter you know, what gender you ascribe to. And I think that's um, really wonderful that you're tackling that because it's a topic that I think needs more attention within the community. And like you said, it was hard enough for for the female aspect of being even listened to because we go back, you know, century. Endometriosis was called hysteria. We were all just crazy. So to see that we've made growth, but even now it still takes 10 years because you're dealing with doctors who either have lack of education, misinformation, or, you know, just want to talk up to all this being crazy. Yeah. So I think it's, um, I think that's awesome that, that you're doing that work. Thank you. Yeah. So what we do at our yellow line is we call everyone an endo warrior. And in our mission, we define them as anyone who's fighting endometriosis, anyone who believes that they're striving for a diagnosis of that, because so many people self-identify with what endometriosis is and say, that's what I have. I just need to get that diagnosis. And then also those friends, family, and spouses who are fighting alongside you every day. So all of our content is meant to be directed at all of those people, the entire endo warrior community that, that is fighting every day with, with this battle. Um, for you personally, if you could offer, and you already have, but if you could offer some advice to somebody who, whether they're at the beginning stage of their endo journey, or if they are someone like ourselves that have gone through excision surgery that have, you know, dealt with this disease for a while. Um, what would you, what would you say was your biggest takeaway, biggest insight? My, my biggest one is that it's okay to be angry and it's okay to have dark thoughts. So, so many of us are, are taught, especially as women to deal with pain, to stay positive, to keep going. There's so many phrases about, you know, put your big girl pants on, hmm. make a bond, go out. No, your feelings are, are real. 
what you're experiencing is an honest experience. There are going to be times where you are tired, where you are angry, and you need to express those feelings. So don't feel that you are, are bound to just dealing with this and, and putting on a smile. By feeling all of those emotions and allowing yourself to, to feel them, you're going to be happier and healthier in the long run. run. Repression is, is not the way to go. Uh, definitely be, be open to all those experiences because that realness and that rawness is gonna help you uh, attract those people that are gonna help you. So yeah. if, if all they see is a smile, they're not gonna know how bad it, it really hurts. And, and that's really what's gonna help you. Yeah, no, that's really good advice. And it's, it's, it's one of those things too, where I know I, I said it, I need to push through or I never show anyone I'm hurting or whatever. And I've had people say to me, well, you can't possibly be sick because you were smiling. You showed up at work and it's like, no, I am really sick, but I'm so afraid of losing my job or people thinking I'm perceived as weak that I don't want to show you that at night I'm balling up in a, you know, in a ball and I have a heating pad and I'm crying and I'm scared. Right. So that's, um, it's okay to feel it. I think it's okay to feel it. I even know for myself now, and I've talked to, to several other people that had similar situations where, you know, and it was one of those things, you feel good. You can feel good. You can have reprieves. And then all of a sudden, you know that pain when it comes back and it's just like, I get so, first of all, I'm in denial of it. Mm -hmm. And then I get really angry at my, like I'm angry at my body. I'm like, what is this? Like, no, no, no. And I'm like, I'm just going to forge ahead. I'm not going to give it, you know, any attention and I'll just, it just will go away. And then it gets worse and worse and worse. And you're just like, oh, holy, oh, yes. Everything you said is what I've experienced. Um, just recently, mine has gone into, it, it's, I, I never say it's, it's in remission, but after surgery, you get that reprieve, which is so great. And yeah. so I've gone through the denial phase and the anger phase, and now I'm in the push through phase, but Aww. that you could not have put it any better. That's all of those gamut of emotions happen. And it, it's tough to be vulnerable, but in that same aspect, it, it really helps you when, when you let certain people see what's really going on. Yeah. 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 And I also think, especially with the doctor, I think it's okay. I think I've cried more times in my life to a doctor than I have anyone else. Um, because by the time you get there, you're just so, you're just so tired and you're so scared and it just all comes out because you're like, I'm here and I'm hoping you could help me. And it's like that, that crying of like, maybe I can somehow get me back. Um, yes. So, and I, I think that's another thing to wrap our heads around too with endo is like, there is really no cure. Um, it is a life, like, so I read this great meme the other day and it said like endo is a life sentence. Mm. And yes, maybe it's not cancer, but it behaves in a certain way where it can spread to organs, it can pull, it's adhesive, it's painful, it's inflammatory, it's chronic, it's overall systematic. So um, the more research that's being done, the more places that are going to put funding behind that, the sooner we can get better treatment options that are not always, you know, maybe one day we'll live in a world where going under the knife isn't the really only thing to do to get rid of these things. Um, but we're not there yet. So for now we talk and for now we cope and we offer each other support. And I think the wonderful thing about the endo community is that at the end of the day, no matter what theories you believe or don't believe or what have you, or little drama that might exist, um, we're all in it together. It, it's so true. And, and that's, talking and coping is so important while we're waiting for what's going to happen in the future. And that's, that's why what you do is so amazing to have a place where everyone who's an endo warrior can go and see other people talking about what they're experiencing and make that connection. It, it really boosts your spirit and lifts you up. And, and that's talking is so important. So thank you for all that you do. Oh, thank you. And thank you for all that you're doing. And especially thank you for being so candid and, and being willing to share, you know, some of the most intimate things about your life and your body. And it's not, it's not an easy thing to do. So, so thank you for trusting us with that.
Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, please come back. We have much more to talk about. <laughs> okay.